Well, hello, and welcome to the Disability and Jesus Sunday service for Sunday the 12th of May, which is both the seventh Sunday in the Easter season, but also the Sunday after Ascension. And so today we're going to be focusing on the readings from the Ascension, a bit where uh, Jesus uh, gathers the disciples together, stands on a mountaintop, blesses them, and then disappears into the clouds. More about that later. So wherever you are, however you are, and whoever you are, in this place and this space, we are apart and together, and you are very welcome. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, you suffered death on the cross for our redemption. Forgive us when we forget your pain and stay in the realm of the evil you defeated. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were raised from death to bring us new life. Forgive us when we prefer the comfort of the familiar and the empty promises of a sinful world. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have ascended to your Father and our Father, your God and our God. Forgive us when we doubt our home in heaven. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Risen Christ. You have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. The reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verses 44 to 53. Then Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as I said at the beginning of the service, this is the Sunday after Ascension Day. So Ascension Day was on Thursday and uh, we are marking it today because not all of us were able to get to an Ascension Day service on the day. So we thought as D&J we would do it today. There is this wonderful bit from Luke's Gospel and Luke repeats himself when he writes the book of Acts, when he writes to Theophilus who has clearly commissioned the, the work to be done. Uh, Luke retells this story and then adds to it a little bit with a few extra details. So if you want to have sort of a well more rounded uh, version of what happened, then read both Luke's direct account of the gospel and also what he then adds to when he writes down in the book of Acts. But there's three really key words that kind of jump out to me. Um, and I'm really grateful to my own vicar, Lissy Scroggy, um, who is a vicar of St. Mary's in the in the area where I live. Um, because she preached beautifully and reflected beautifully on this reading um, on Ascension Day on Thursday evening. I was really caught by this and went, yeah, those are the three words I think I noticed too. So let me share those three words with you from this passage from Luke. The first word is the word witnesses. You are witnesses of these things, says Jesus. Now, the context of all this, of course, is Good Friday, well, I suppose Monday, Thursday, Last Supper, and a trial and a rest overnight. Good Friday, crucifixion, Holy Saturday, nothing. Easter Sunday, 
resurrection and various appearances, the road to Emmaus, the upper room with the disciples, a week later, the disciples and Thomas this time around, various things that happen, this breakfast on the beach where he restores Peter back to a place where Peter feels that you know, he can continue in ministry as opposed to maybe feeling like a wreck for denying Jesus three times. There's a whole variety of appearances, but now, 40 days later, after that resurrection appearance, Jesus says, now is the time, now is the time to call it. We're done. I'm done. Um, you, you're it. <laughs> tag, you're it. Almost. It's the Ascension Day, basically, the biggest game of tag, you're it. I wonder, reflect. So Jesus gathers them together. He, he gives. He reminds them of what's in Scripture, what's been fulfilled through Scripture, what he's here to do. And he says, you are witnesses of these things. You are to be the one that witness, that tell, that explain, that that travel around saying to people, I can tell you because I was there. You have to be the witnesses of these things. There's a lovely bit in the Miracle Maker um, animated film from, mm, I'm showing my age now, quite a long time ago. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of animation. And at the end of it, they use this piece where Jesus gathered the disciples and he says, you are witnesses of these things and blessed are those who have seen, uh, who not seen and yet believe. And the, the character of Jesus looks straight down the camera at us who are watching. And to me, this commission to be witnesses to the disciples then and to the, the wider group of people around them is also an echo down to us too. We are to engage with scripture, to understand Jesus' place in scripture, in history, and also fulfilling scripture within his own human lifespan. And also commissioning us to be the witnesses too, to wrestle with scripture, to understand scripture, to apply scripture, and to understand and witness to what Jesus means to us and to those around us. We are to also be witnesses, not just observing what happened, but speaking out. If you're a witness in a court of law, the question you're asked is, what did you see? What did you hear? What did you observe? Not just be present in the moment of the thing occurring to then stand up and give an account as a witness to say yes these are the things that I was there for that I experienced that I know to be true and to speak out about it to tell the story so the first word in this passage and again in the book of Acts is the word witness how is your life how is my life a witness to the good news of Jesus is my life, a good news, a witness of the good news of Jesus? That's probably the bigger question, isn't it? But let's assume it is. How is it? How am I doing? Am I a witness to the good news of Jesus? Or am I a witness to the anxiety and argument, argumentative nature of the church? I wonder. You go on Anglican Twitter. It's a really good question there too. So the first word is witness. Let us be witnesses of the good news of Jesus, not just knowing it and observing it, but living it out, a living testimony of what Jesus is and who he loves. The second word we notice is blessing. Jesus takes them out to Bethany, which I think is where Martha and Mary and Lazarus live. And he goes out to Bethany, which is up a hillside, and lifting up his hands, he blesses everybody gathering. And as he is still blessing, those words of blessing, that action of blessing, he withdraws and is carried up into a cloud. The cloud detail comes in the book of Acts. So Jesus is continually blessing as he leaves. There's a great phrase that goes around Christian circles, blessed to be a blessing. And in that moment, as Jesus is blessing as he leaves, it's not I bless you and now I'll go or I'm gone, but bless you from afar. It is with and alongside and as he moves away, that continual sense of blessing that I think we are called to do the same. See, we can talk the talk and be a, a theoretical witness about all of this stuff. But if we're not actually blessing people with the love we have received from God and then give to other people, we're just a talking shop, I think. We're just a billboard that says, here's a promise, but there's nothing behind it. So you can bear witness, but have nothing behind it at all to back it up. So be a witness, but also receive and give blessing to those around us. Blessed to be a blessing to others. 
What's the third word? Well, it's kind of, I'm going to cheat a little bit and have two. It was worship and joy. And I think probably the one I want to major on is joy. Too often, our time of worship, our discipleship is a witness. There is a truth that's told. There's a story that's narrated. Uh, it's not terribly exciting or, or joyful. It can come across as quite somber, quite staid, quite dull, quite boring, quite judgmental. We can do acts of service that other people may receive as a blessing, but without any joy behind it, it's more servitude than it is blessing. What makes a difference? What brings these things alive? What lights us up in the light of others and the light of others is joy. Their response to all of this, frankly, weirdness of the last 40 days, let alone the previous three years, their response is no longer puzzlement and fear. It's no longer argument and debate. It's no longer trying to jostle for higher positions. Their response to all this weirdness, the commission to be witnesses, that's a big commission, isn't it? The, the blessing received as Jesus leaves, their response is joy. Their response is joy. As Christians, as Jesus-like people, wouldn't it be great if we were known to be those who told the truth and witnessed to the love of Jesus? Wouldn't it be great if we were known to be those who blessed other people, not as an act of service or because we felt like we ought to, but because we genuinely wanted to from a place of compassion and love? Wouldn't it be great if the Christian church was known as a place of joy, as individual Christians, a people of joy, yes, who, who face awful stuff in life just like everybody in humanity does well seemingly everybody some of the elites seem to get away with it but that real sense of, of no matter what there is still even a slither of joy even a, a life full of joy still joy remains wouldn't it be great if each one of us could be witnesses who are joyful who could bless other people from a place of joy who could have worship that exuded joy not trying to silver line everything and go oh it'll be fine a sense of sort of false optimism but genuine deep-seated joy finding delight in all things this is the commission i think that jesus gives to those disciples then and of course down through the ages with every echo of any any generation to us now today in this place and this space to be truth-telling witnesses, knowing that we are blessed to be a blessing. And in our worship, people of joy. Amen. We pray for God to fill us with his spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident of your love wherever you call us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division sickness and sorrow. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives 
the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit given us by the risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your spirit. Generous God, you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Messiah at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your spirit. Hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the road rise to meet you, the rain fall soft upon your fields, the sun shine warm upon your face, and until we meet again, may God keep you safe in the hollow of his hand. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.